Good afternoon, everyone. Um, happy Tuesday. I hope it's warming up for everyone across the nation. Um, we have a webinar today. It's New Frontiers in Jail Education. Um, it's brought to you by Securus Technologies, and we have Dan Griffith. He's a familiar face, um, and he's with Securus Technologies um, now, and I'll turn it over to Dan. Thank you. Thank you, Bethel. Appreciate it. Welcome, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today on this webinar. Um, if you uh, don't know me, uh, just a quick little bit of background information. So I was with Essential Education until 2023. So you may have seen some of the webinars we've done in the past with COAID or um, other uh, webinars that were sponsored. And in uh, October of 2023, I came to Securus. Um, before Essential Ed, I ran Steck Vaughn, I ran Contemporary before that. Uh, I've been an adult educator. I taught high school and community college math. Um, I am a high school dropout who got my GED many, many years ago. And I'm currently a deputy in my home county. I work as a reserve deputy of five to 600 hours a year, uh, working road patrol to help our deputies um, stay safe and, and uh, you know, contribute to our community. So I have a unique perspective on jail education, <laughs> being both a teacher and a deputy and someone who's been in adult education and workforce development for many, many years. And so I hope today's um, webinar will give you some ideas or some uh, strategies to think about how we can really take jail education to the next level. And so um, Bethel, if you would go ahead and launch that poll for me. That would be great. Um, my job at Securus, so if you'll just answer this real quick question, I'd like to know how many of you are actually currently working with a local jail versus those that um, maybe are not uh, yet involved with their, with their current jails. Uh, my job at Securus, though, is to help adult education programs recognize, develop, and or improve their jail education programs. So I was hired by uh, Securus to do just that. And in the last six months, I have been all across the country, uh, con you know, meeting with uh, sheriffs and jail commanders and uh, folks from all different elements of, um, of uh, that, that sphere to talk about how we can create educational programs that will work and that will be meaningful. And I think there's so much going on right now that is really exciting in this field. The technology has changed everything. We have um, tablets now that can deliver a level of educational support that we have not seen uh, at all in the past. And so that's really powerful because it's, it's creating a whole different environment for education. Uh, we have a digital equity grant that is about to start dripping money out of the faucet. And there's a lot of money out there. It's, um, billions of dollars, $2.75 billion in that. And if we do things now that can demonstrate some effectiveness, we can then use that to go after that money and really bring technology components into jails in a way that can make a huge difference for us. Uh, our communities and businesses need this. Everywhere you go, people are starving for employees. Uh, obviously, we need to give people hope change their lives, help them see what's going on. Oh, great, so we got a nice mix. 64% uh, of folks are currently working with jails and 36 are not, so that's wonderful, thank you. Um, we need to support our law enforcement folks. Uh, in many ways, we have a lot of people who really want to actively provide these services to the people who uh, are in their care, but oftentimes they just don't know how. They're, they're not educators and they don't know what the best pathway is, and that creates a great opportunity for us in adult education. And then we also have to remember that programming in uh, any kind of incarcerated environment makes things safer. It, it gives people something to do, it engages their minds, it, gives, it brings down behavior issues, it creates all kinds of opportunities um, that, that level it out and, and level out kind of the ups and downs of that life, uh, which is important. So I'm gonna go off camera now. And since you know, I'm actually a real live person <laughs> and we'll start uh, going through a few of these slides um, and talk about 
how jail education is changing and where some really great opportunities are in that. Um, I have one of my colleagues, Brian Walsh, is on with us as well, and he's going to be monitoring chat. So make sure you've introduced yourself. Make sure that your chat bar down at the bottom where you put in your comments says to everyone and not just hosts and panelists. And, um, and feel free to share your ideas or information and uh, other things like that as we go through this as well. So let's start with um, a couple of statistics. These are four bullets that I like to show whenever I'm talking with people about um, uh, education in an incarcerated environment. The first is that, you know, if, if the research is showing that if you engage in any kind of um, education program while you're incarcerated, you will be 43% um, like less likely to uh, be reinvolved. Uh, recidivism goes down by 43%, which is phenomenal. That's a big decrease uh, by just being involved in any kind of an educational program. So that's what we want to do. We want to make sure we're getting more and more people into education programs during that time where they're incarcerated. The second bullet, this idea that's up to 70% of all incarcerated individuals have an undiagnosed learning disability and 60% lack a high school diploma, that tells me that we have a real opportunity to impact people. The folks who are coming into um, jails are people who have a background of potential non-success in an educational environment. And we can change that. We have the tools, adult educators have the knowledge and the background on how to impact people differently so that they can move forward in their, uh, in their education. The third bullet is that if you are going to create any kind of a long-term uh, you know, stability for someone, life-sustaining wages for them and their families, they have to have certifications. You just aren't going to get into great jobs without some sort of certification. Um, and so things like, um, you know, things like if you want to go get a CDL, for instance, become a truck driver. We tend to push too many people there, I think, but that is a certification that opens up a career pathway for you. We have to make sure that we can get people to that level. And, and what we're finding is people can pass the skill side of many certifications, but they lack the math, reading, and language skills to pass the 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 academic, you might say, element of those certifications to pass the actual tests. And so that's a difficulty. We need to work on that. We need to find ways that we can support that. Uh, I see someone asking for a question about uh, the, where these things come from, and I will get that to you in a follow-up email so you'll have all this, um, these citations. And then the last one um, from the National Adult Literacy Survey, 70% of incarcerated adults can't read at a fourth grade level. That's really critical because until you address that reading skill level, everything else is kind of hinging on that. Uh, we have to get people at a higher reading level if we're going to get them to be able to access all of the other tools and support that are there to help them change their lives. So I'd love to pull these four out because I think they address probably the biggest elements that, that we need to think about when we consider the path and the road that incarcerated individuals are taking. Now, let's see um, a little bit of clarity, just so that we're all clear on what I'm trying to address here, <laughs> is that we're looking at jail versus prison. Prison, have, uh, prison systems have very thorough and wonderful uh, programs. I toured um, uh, Ingram State College in Alabama, connected to Alabama DOC. They have a phenomenal uh, campus and programs there to support people in getting all kinds of certifications and programs, plumbing to building to college degrees, um, really powerful set of resources and support for that. Um, jails have a unique challenge though. The length of stay, personnel, space, other issues like that create different challenges than prisons and ones that we need to address, but now have the opportunity to do that. So in the chat, let's just see, what do you think the two most important things to jail command staff are? What are the two things that are heaviest in their minds day in and day out, most important? 
safety, safety, security and security. <laughs> exactly. Wonderful. Absolutely. It is safety and security. It is it, the two things are the safety and security of their employees, of their officers, and the safety and security of those who are in their care. That's the most important element. They want everybody to go home safely, in essence, to, to be safe, uh, to not have issues, to not deal with um, any kind of you know violence or other issues like that in the jail. Those are the most important things, and those are big heavy lifts on both sides. You're, you're dealing with a wide variety of individuals uh, in that setting. You're trying to make sure that uh, you know people are paired correctly and that things don't, don't escalate into any kind of a bad situation. And that can come from all different ways. It can come you know, from individual to individual, from staff to individual or individual to staff. Uh, it can come for people hurting themselves. All of those are really important to jail command staff, and it's it's a huge, uh, you know, concern for them. So when we think about it as adult educators, if we can help jail staff focus on the education side, uh, it's a big opportunity for them. Uh, technology, as I said, is is changing that. We're going to look at that in a little bit. We know the communities; these folks are coming back into our communities. And that's important. We want to give them every tool to be um, functional and effective and happy members of our communities. Um, it's a unique moment in the life of the individual. Uh, for many people, this is a kind of one-time experience. They get arrested one time. It is a rock bottom. And they realize, I have to make some changes in my life. Or maybe it's just a consequential thing. Maybe it's a situation where... Um, you know, I made a mistake. Uh, I'm going to have to deal with it, but I need to. I need to put myself in a different position at this point, point. and that's a that's a great moment in time for a person, because if we can give them the opportunity to move, you know, move from that, if we can give them the hope and the and the pathway to move, it's a big deal. And then this last thing is that because of the technology we can now apply a variety of approaches, of approaches to educating in, in jail sitting, settings. And, um, and that lets us think differently about our re resource allocation. It allows us to customize it based on what's available in our communities, from big to small to volunteers to all different types of um, support like that. And so there's a great moment here that's kind of coming together because of all this where we can, um, we can make some serious change in the way things have been done in the past. All right, let's see here. Um, I played with this graphic for quite a while and I, I, I wanna make the point here that if we take the incarcerated individual at the center of things and say, how are we going to help that person move forward? We have all of these kind of interdependent touch points or places that we house support for them. And so obviously the jail administration is most closely around them during that, that time period. And there are elements to what they can do to help that person uh, engage and, and, uh, and create a, a way for them to move forward. Um, but our adult education programs from adult basic ed to colleges to HSC programs and technical training, they have the ability to interact here and engage. Workforce development, everything from apprenticeships to uh, career counseling has a way to engage. Uh, our community-based partners, um, you know, if you thought if I had a magic wand and I could, you know, wave it and get rid of low education levels and substance abuse, we'd have very few people go into jail, uh, you know, in, in, in many communities or much less folks go into jail. Um, those are just killers. You know, if you're reading at a fourth grade level and you're hooked on substances, it's going to be very difficult for you uh, to not end up in a cycle in and out of jail. And then barrier reduction, uh, things that help people through that 45 to 60 days right when you come out of jail that you need in order to stabilize yourself. Uh, you know, even if you had a great job the first day that you walk out of jail to, to 
it's going to take a while for those paychecks to become stable enough and consistent enough for you to be able to afford housing in a safe place where you can limit who's coming into your house on a regular basis, uh, where you can get the transportation that you need or the childcare that you need in order to stay focused on that job. And so these are all really important elements that we need to think of as interdependent with each other. None of these really happen well without the others. And being a former educator, I tend to be education at the, the real core of that. Because if you can't read above a fourth grade level, uh, it's, it's really hard to, to stay focused on the types of things that we're gonna give you to progress. Um, we can give you support around substance abuse, but you're gonna need to do some reading. You're gonna need to do some things that um, help you understand your situation. You're gonna have to do some planning and critical thinking at a level that you need greater than fourth grade reading level skills to, to do. Same thing if you're gonna get into barrier reduction. How am I gonna find housing? How am I gonna fill out the applications I need for the support if I'm reading at a fourth grade level? All of that hinges on those critical thinking and um, skills that we need that come from adult education. And that's why it's such a critical component in this interdependence. But we have the opportunity to innovate now and those innovations can lead us to things that we can do in the um, digital equity grant to provide additional funding and to access funding from different sources uh, across our communities. All right, so at the national conference this year in Nashville, I had a chance to do a session talking about jail education specifically. And we looked at this, we did this activity, which I'm not gonna ask you to do right now. I just want you to look at these um, elements that, that we were talking about. So we had 30 or 40 people in the room, uh, gave them two minutes per area. So they partnered up and, and talked about the delivery of content in jail education and programming over the last 30 or 40 years, what's a single word that described what they'd seen in terms of delivery of content? How was instruction delivered? What was the physical spaces like? Things like that. Then we looked at products. What kind of things were available to go into jails? Um, what kind of resources did they have? Or what were the rooms? Were there you know, technology available for people? What types of technology did you have? Same thing with progress, thinking about over that time period, how quickly did students learn? How far could they go in that setting uh, in terms of getting to say high school equivalency diplomas or college degrees or some sort of certifications? And the one word that came up most often in all three categories was limited. It was that the resources are limited that we don't have uh, all of the tools that we need, that, that we've struggled over time to get the things that we really want uh, in there and to be able to use them effectively with people. And so when we think about that, that's where I wanna show you some of the cool changes that have happened. So Securus provides, if you're not familiar with Securus, we provide all kinds of services uh, into jails and prisons. We have a tablet that is a primary tool for making phone calls, e-messaging, staying connected to your friends and family. And so you can see the screen over there, the tablet. Um, these tablets overcome a lot of barriers and we're not the only tablet company out there. So I don't want you to think I'm, I'm necessarily pitching that right now. Um, there are tablet companies that offer various uh, types of tablets and tools like this. Uh, many of the jails I've gone to have not made a movement to this yet. So they're still using video kiosks or other things like that for phone calls. They haven't moved to kind of a one-to-one -one tablet engagement, although many have. And so that's a real opportunity for us in adult education, because if we can help a jail move, maybe through a digital equity grant, uh, to bring tablets in, it opens up lots of opportunities for us, because the tablets overcome all kinds of barriers. They overcome the interruptions that happen in a, uh, in a jail setting. You, there are times you just have to go on lockdown. And when you have to go on lockdown, everything else has to stop. Those interruptions happen on a regular basis. And that can be difficult sometimes to 
uh, maintain an educational momentum or inertia when your schedule is up and down based on what's going on uh, uh, in, that in, in that facility. Um, it overcomes the individualization issue. It, it's difficult sometimes to really individualize content when you only have a couple hours um, maybe to work with folks. Uh, idle time, obviously, wait lists. Uh, we can give this to a, a large portion of the population and, um, and get them working towards a classroom environment even before they're able to come into that. Um, for the law enforcement officers, it reduces movement. It creates a safer environment. If I can do this for my cell and not have to be taken down to a classroom or moved uh, through the facility, that's a big benefit to the law enforcement officers. Um, space, obviously, some, some jails are overcrowded. They don't have a place to create a classroom. And then um, there are liability issues, contraband issues that happen when you bring in things like workbooks. There were um, two lawyers recently indicted in Houston for dipping uh, uh, papers, legal papers in fentanyl and sending it into the jail. So, you know, law enforcement is always hesitant to bring in additional things into the jail because it's a possibility to introduce uh, contraband and other items like that. So all of those things can be mitigated to some degree with the use of a tablet. And when we think about that, it changes the way we can do delivery models. So we can now create individualized, adaptive, self-paced, independent learning, right? We can deliver programs that meet all of those different uh, elements in that, in that statement. And that's amazing. It, it doesn't require a person to be right there standing next to them anymore. The technology can do that. We can think of this as an asynchronous distance learning classroom uh, that, that we can create. It's Everyone happens to be in the same location. I saw somebody at the beginning of this uh, in the chat put in, uh, they were a jail educator and they said, Jails have great attendance. <laughs> Absolutely true, right? You, you, your attendance rates are really high in jails. So we can think of this as an asynchronous classroom. We can create hybrid learning classrooms where you can use um, the tools or the space that you have. You can create different types of models of that hybrid learning as well. Um, maybe it's coming in once a month. Maybe it's uh, coming in once a week. Maybe it's using some sort of video visitation to do some sort of a hybrid, uh, you know, um, interaction with people. And we can do direct instruction too. We can use the tablets and that mechanism to have people get on and read articles and have everybody on the same piece or looking at the same piece at the same time. It's a really powerful mechanism for getting what we have needed as teachers for a long time into the hands of people in the jail. Let's look at uh, products. So, you know, for years, again, a lot of what was done was kind of a pass down of K-12 products. Um, you know, you, you got some workbooks, you got a few things that um, maybe a couple of computers that were standalone computers that you could load some standalone so software on. Over the last five years, we've seen some of that change, we've seen some, some more movement towards uh, Chromebooks or some uh, online mechanisms, more in prisons than in jails, but some in jails as well. So now, you know, we're able to develop or to deliver adult basic education products, uh, everything from, um, you know, computer programs to PDFs to workbooks of PDFs or PDFs of workbooks. We can do HSE prep. We have programs that are used in uh, K-12 CTE classes that create certifications. Uh, we have workforce programs that will help people find jobs that can create additional like resumes and badging. Um, we have ESL, EOSOL programs. There can be behavioral therapy programs, uh, mental health programs, all kinds of tools for fluency, things like podcasts. Um, videos, media, things like that. When you're thinking about the products, uh, I think some of these are really important elements to consider. Um, 
adaptive individualized content is really important. Uh, you want to make sure if you can get it, that the content actually learns that learner and creates a learning plan for them because much of what they'll do, they'll do on their own. Uh, it should be adult design. There's plenty of great adult de design products out there uh, that can be delivered through the tablets. Uh, it should be self-directed and there should be a really good onboarding process so that if someone is sitting there alone and they click on a, an app or a, a, a button, it should take them through how to get on, what to do. It should walk them through that process uh, specifically. Uh, there should be support tools for you, um, programs uh, that let you go into the learning management system and see what individuals are doing, a way to access that. And there should be a wide variety of content so that people have, you know, people are at a, a huge disparity of level in, in a jail from folks who, again, are at that very low second, third grade level, ESL, maybe just, just learning English for the first time to people who have college degrees and, and need things to stay mentally stimulated uh, in what they're doing as well. And then finally, when we think about progress and we think about how the tech, tablet technology is really changing that, it's about the fact that, that we can get much larger time periods with people. Um, you know, We can now measure time and effort differently because we can see it on the tablet and we can track that. And that's a huge factor in understanding what's going on with individuals and who's really motivated and involved in trying to change. We can see their progress. So we can see what they're doing in the program and how that progress is, is preparing them for things, um, preparing them to take assessments or certifications or um, accomplished degrees. Uh, we can see their readiness for all of that. So all of this learning really takes on a much greater um, tracking ability because of what we can do in tablets. And so let me just share three things. So we talked delivery products and progress. So I'm going to share three real life examples from what we've done uh, or people I've talked to recently. So one is a small jail in Michigan where they are very interested in using the programs on the tablet so that they can, in essence, deepen their reach into their, um, their, uh, their group of individuals. So right now they're limited to only nine people in a class at a time. And so that's all they can access. They're not allowed to have any more than that in a single room at a single time. And so, that's their model up to this point was a teacher coming in several times a week, meeting with these individuals out of the hundred people in the jail, only nine of them were getting services at a time. By delivering the content through the tablet, they can send it out to everybody and then they can cherry pick from there. And that's one of the beautiful parts about this is I can, I can then go in and see who are the people who are putting in the most effort on their own time when they have access to it? Who are the ones who are really motivated? And I'll go grab those nine students first and I'll bring them into class. And then my work with them is going to be accelerated because now I can really move quickly. They're already showing the motivation. You know, it's much easier to teach a group of people who are all really motivated and driving than it is to teach, you know, when you're not really sure who's really in it and who isn't. So. Once that nine gets through, I can move on and pick up another uh, nine from there. So really powerful way to do it and to reach a much broader audience. We know not everybody's going to do it. It's not a panacea that you just put in somebody's hand. Now everybody's going to be committed to their future. But you'll be able to tell pretty quickly who is and who isn't. Another example is in a jail in Georgia. They have no educators working with them at this particular time. We put in the um, programs on uh, the tablets. We have Essential Education and Adobo, uh, both available through our tablets. And I'll show you in just a minute what those look like. Uh, 162 hours from about, a, about 40 individuals in six weeks. Now, what that says to me as an adult educator is I have an opportunity 
to engage in a way that I can get MSGs, I can get some uh, completion rates, and I can use that as part of my program. People want to learn. The boredom and uh, other factors of being incarcerated are driving them to want to do the work. That's a lot of hours. And it's not everybody studying, as we said, but out of 40 individuals to get that kind of overall hours, um, there are definitely some folks in there who are really focused on getting their education, using the time wisely, and progressing. And that's with not a single educator standing there saying to them, you can do it. Click here. We'll get you started. I'll help you get through this first little bit. None of that. It's just launching it and saying, click on this if you want to get into your education which shows me that people are engaged and the content can be delivered effectively. And then my third example is a pilot we're doing actually with two classes, um, 75 individuals had two really super teachers engaged in the work. Uh, in the last 50 days, I believe it's been 50 days, so it's about seven weeks, 674 hours in the essential education program. That is a lot of hours. They tested, I believe, 12, uh, 12 folks the other day, and all 12 passed based on the um, scores from the essential education practice test. So they, they gave them the essential ed test as their marker and were able to get 12 people, all 12 that took the test, passed um, their test. And that's in 50 days. That's incredible, right? Like I've never been so excited to see that that kind of a result is happening. And so I think people are really at a place where they want this and they will do the work and we can take advantage of it because the content is so much more interesting and it's something they can do on a regular basis. All right, so we can accelerate, accelerate, accelerate if we uh, have these tools. Let me just show you a little graphic we put together, just, uh, just so you can kind of think through how the tablet really impacts the day of a student. Um, because there's lots of things that are on the tablet, right? I, I you know, in, in some of our facilities, they have the tablets 24 seven. In some facilities, they're handed out at the beginning of the day and taken back at, at the end of the day. Um, but you think about the types of things that they can do. They can listen to podcasts. They can make phone calls home. You know, that is a really critical element to making it through a really tough patch in your life is the ability to connect to your family and the people that you love and to, and to share, um, you know, their lives with you. Um, I remember a while back we were doing uh, a project and talking to a jail educator and, and she said, you know, sometimes I forget that the folks I'm working with, they have lives that are still going forward outside of the boundaries of the facility. Sometimes we, we get caught up in the idea that their mind is only focused on what's going on within those you know, four walls of, of their, their area. But it isn't true. They have wives and husbands and children and parents and their illnesses and accidents and trials and bills to be paid and all of those other things. And think about how difficult that would be when you don't feel like you can do anything about it because you're incarcerated. And that ability to connect and to talk somebody to that or to share in the difficulties and to empathize and to support the people that you love at home is a really critical element to what something like a tablet can do for people. Uh, again, it goes back to that idea of giving hope and direction and connection to people. Um, there's all kinds of things from music to entertainment that allow you to feel like a regular person during this time as well, so that you don't feel completely disconnected uh, from what goes on uh, in the rest of the world. When you can mix education and tools like that into this, you can see all the opportunities that you might have to sit down and do a lesson here, do a lesson there. I don't know if any of you have ever used Duolingo. I've been trying to learn Greek for about six years now. And uh, I, I've, it's the same thing. Like I, I pick that up and, you know, if I have 10 minutes somewhere, I'm waiting in the lobby for, well, for something to happen. Um, 
you know, it's easy to jump on Duolingo and do a quick lesson. And um, and I just keep doing it. I got a 42 day streak right now, Chris Walden. I got 42 days going. Um, I'm trying to trying to keep it going. But, uh, you know, you can see how you can integrate this in easily into all kinds of different elements. And just as a point, you know, most tablet providers are are willing to look at adding whatever on there. Securus is not, um, you know, absolutely tied to any single application. We, we, we want to be a menu of things so that we can meet your needs based on what you're putting together uh, in your classroom. Now, I just want to take a minute because I've talked a lot about all this and I want to show you what it looks like on a tablet here so that you can see, because if you haven't seen tablets in the past, um, I'll just take a brief, dem brief demo here to show you a couple things. So this is what our Unity tablet looks for, looks like. Um, you can see that it shows that my account is in good standing. Um, I can make phone calls on the Connect Me app, eMessage, which is like an email system. I can send cards. I have tools like Office Suite so that I can do college level courses where I have access to spreadsheets and um, you know, word processing documents, things like that. Through the Lantern app, we do a single sign-on and we can embed all kinds of courses here uh, for individuals. So we can actually put in, this will load for me, it should be coming up. Uh, we can put in all kinds of things. So we do a single sign-on into the Essential Ed course. I've seen several people mention that. We can access the Work Ready courses. I can go into GED Academy or HiSET Academy, depending on which one you're using. Uh, these can be delivered directly. So you see here, I've got a unit on whole numbers. And so I can hit start lesson here. I have to turn the tablet sideways because it's mobile optimized for this. And I think I'm gonna have to do a restart. You won't be able to hear it because everything's done through headphones uh, so that no one's disturbing anyone else with audio. There are no arguments about that. But this would be the normal lesson that's delivered through um, uh, essential education. I click start and I'm going to get the lesson. I can do all the work on here. We have an external keyboard we can plug in so that we can actually um, uh, do things like writing assessments and, and things like that. Um, so all of that, you know, delivers just like you would do on a computer, uh, but it's done on a tablet that they can access at any time. A uh, couple of questions I see. So, um, Let's see, Brian's probably answering them. So let me just uh, let me just uh, leave that for just a minute. Um, but we can do just about any content and you don't have to have all the phone calls and things. So there are, you know, all of this screen that you see here is completely tailored um, site by site. They can choose what's on, what's off, what's allowed, what's not allowed. All of that can be delivered individually. You'll see down here the Adobo program. Adobo offers 25,000 hours of content. So I can come in if I want and do some discovery learning. Uh, I have access to academic content, jobs and finance, health and recovery, arts, re-entry, spirituality, Spanish courses. These can even be customized. You can add up there where it says my facility. You can add specific uh, programs that are available. Uh, all of that. Uh, content, you'll see there's everything from courses here. There are courses that earn certificate. Oops, sorry, I scrolled a little bit too much. You'll see that math uh, earns a certificate. The analyzing and interpreting literature earns a certificate. Those are important to those folks who are incarcerated. They want to be able to show judges and other folks that they've been working diligently and that they have um, earned these certificates while they were uh, incarcerated, you'll see uh, Rising Strong, a substance abuse recovery course, uh, CBT, critical um, behavior or cognitive behavioral therapy uh, course embedded here. Powerful content that we can deliver to individuals via the tablet um, that's available for them uh, just at a couple of clicks, right? And they can have access to all of this, as well as the other tools that we talked about and other things that we talked about also. So I just wanted to give you a quick glimpse of that in case you haven't seen the tablets in the past. Let's see if we go back to this and go back to that. You should be seeing my screen again. Good. Okay. Um, 
let's go through a couple things. So we did vet content at Securus. So we have what we've developed is a, a thoughtful pathway of content. Um, Essential Ed, because it individualizes the instruction, is a great tool, especially when you're starting at that lower level with like TAVE Academy or CASAS Goals Academy. Um, it individualizes the content. It's very self-directed. Uh, Adovo, again, opens up lots of opportunities to bring in new content and, and additional practice and content from other areas like those mental health and spirituality content. Below the line, you'll see we've tried to create a great deal of um, workforce content uh, that's available. So from essential eds, work essentials to computer essentials, all kinds of re-entry of content in Adovo. We have uh, programs we're working with like Honest Jobs, WorkBay, that are uh, career tools, places where you can build a resume, where you can search for jobs. Uh, with second chance employers, search by your zip code, create your resume, earn certifications, um, additional content like the podcasts and eBooks and newsstand, again, to just enrich uh, the person's uh, access and experience uh, so that they're building skills and they have access to great content all the way through. We also partner with college, uh, colleges across the country so we can deliver college classes directly uh, through the tablets. It's a little unique in a jail setting. You need to obviously be in a situation where you're going to be there for an extended period of time. And that sometimes creates some unique um, uh, challenges, but it's not something that we should just set aside and not actively innovate on, right? The whole message I hope you get from today is let's innovate in this. Let's figure out the ways that we can create innovation and handoffs and ways to get people started in jail and then keep them going when they walk outside those doors. And so to that, I wanna bring up this point, which is uh, we, have a lot of, we have a lot of ways of thinking about delivering content. And one of the most important ones that you're going to need to think about as it relates to going in and talking to your jail staff about building a relationship and creating programs is how this length of stay impacts what you do. The average stay in most jails is 10 to 14 days. So it's a small period of time for a lot of people. They're in, they're, um, they're, they're going through some process, waiting for somebody to send money so that they can make bond, maybe going through some uh, trials, pre-trials, things like that. Um, and so that, that time period is, is often pretty short. And I know a lot of you are thinking, but I need MSGs or it doesn't count. If I don't get 40 hours of instruction and a pre-test and post-test, I'm not gonna get the funding that I want from this. And I just challenge you to think about giving up a little bit there so that you can get a lot. If you think of this as kind of, if you think of a short course as kind of a loss leader, how could I, how could I do something quick? Maybe a course on job seeking or job readiness skills, um, using something, you know, building your resume, something like that where what you're doing is you're taking that individual and you're saying, let's get your mind focused on your long-term pathway towards a career and a good job. And during that short stay, I'm gonna give you some instructions, some tools, some access to things that will do that. And when you leave, I want you to come visit me at the Adult Ed Center because I wanna give you the, the tools that you need academically to get further than just that entry level job, but to get to higher levels, certifications and things like that. You have to kind of think of this as seeding it. You know, you're, you're, you're getting people hooked on an idea that they can change their lives, that they can become something that they've always wanted to become. So you're gonna have to think about giving up a little bit because you're not gonna get an MSG in 10 days, right? You're not gonna get somebody uh, who's dealing with all of what they're dealing with in that 10-day jail stay, uh, where you need them to go immediately. But you can use that as a way to get them started and to recruit them into your program. 
for the folks that are going to be there one to three weeks, you can open up more things. You can start to then maybe look at, maybe I can get you through one level of a GED, one GED test, one HSC test. Um, if you're going to be there longer than three weeks, we can plan all kinds of things. But I, I challenge you to think about what could you give to the jail that, um, you know, would be something that would be good for the community, good for publicity, and allow you to recruit because it's going to impact people's lives and, uh, and create a pathway for them to come to you. And hi, Lori. Yes, I will be at New York State Association of Incarcerated in Education Programs, and we'll be doing a presentation there. Uh, let's see. So real quick, I just have a quick challenge opportunity for you. I'm going to bring up these three areas here. Uh, if your last name is A to H, begins with an A through H, I want you to take the first column. If your last name is from I to Q, the second column. And if your last name is R to Z, the third column. I'm gonna give you about 90 seconds to look at this list. Um, I want you to think about what's the biggest challenge you face in the column that you have. I guess I should just pull those up here. So hiding it from you. So what's the biggest challenge you face in personnel when you think about working and creating jail programs? And then what is the opportunity that exists for you there? I want you to reframe it as an opportunity. So I want you to put in chat, my challenge is X, my opportunity is X. So I want you to change your challenge to an opportunity. Think about collaboration. What's the big challenge with collaborating with your community members, all those different groups that we talked about in that, in that colorful graphic. And then what about continuation, making that baton pass from inside to outside. What are the big challenges there? So take just a minute and, um, and uh, I'll give you about 90 seconds to do that. And yes, this is being recorded and will be available on the, um, yeah, on the uh, COAB site. Get some folks to add challenge and opportunities in the chat so we can see what you're thinking. Awesome. Yeah, sometimes the jail administrators are difficult. We're going to talk about that in just a minute. Thanks for bringing that up, Ola. Yeah, I love the one about uh, finding the right type of teacher. And, you know, the technology now really opens that up because I don't, I, I can do things in a hybrid setting that will make people more willing to participate. Um, it does sometimes take a different type of person who wants to walk into a jail every single day, right? For five days a week. Um, and, and a lot of people might not be willing to do that, but would be willing to do something in a hybrid environment. Uh, I love the idea of uh, workforce continuation. How do we do that? And your opportunity is to partner with those who need employees. Um, I heard a man at, um, at COAID this year say, it used to be if you checked the felon box on a job application, that it was seven years. They wanted to see seven years between the time that you, uh, you know, your felony conviction was, you were out to the time that they were willing to hire you. And that is just done away now. We have employers who are working with people who have um, pending felony, uh, you know, felony uh, convictions. They're going to court with them and standing in front of the judge and saying, you know, Bob has been a great employee. He started working with us while his trial was going on. He's been doing a great job. Is there any way we can do something with his sentence so we can keep him, uh, keep him working here? So I think the mindset is changing. Employers need people and they need people who can do jobs and will be effective in doing those jobs. And you know, you're not going to get somebody who's been uh, indicted for uh, trafficking of drugs to work at CVS, but you might get them. You know, you'll get them to work in a factory or some other places like that. So I think people are willing to say, if you made a mistake, we can overlook that. If you can demonstrate that you're ready to move forward. Thank you all for all of those wonderful uh, comments. Keep them coming in the chat. Uh, the chat will be. Uh, available and posted, I believe, along with the session so that you can come in and see that. We'll capture these and um, I'll, I'll do a summary email. All of you who are on here, I'm going to do a summary email with the statistic information and citations 
as well as uh, any of these ideas so that we can organize that for you and share that information. I just have two more slides for you. So kind of a next steps. What I hope you come away from this with is um, thinking about how you can engage the local jail and make that a bigger part of your program. So that digital equity grant we've talked about a couple of times, 2.75 billion has specific language in it that says incarcerated individuals need to be addressed. You can go after that funding. You can go after the discretionary side or the state side of that funding and show innovative programs that are driving education into jails using technology. And that technology grant will, will give you a way to enhance that and to talk to your jail administrators about um, ways that you can access funds to get things like tablets or smart boards or other tools that you need to help people experience and understand the power of technology in their lives to move forward. What's important to understand is to come back to that idea of what does the law enforcement officer need in that time? Movement is difficult. You have to understand that. And if you can articulate to them that through this technology, we can reduce that movement, we can make your jail a safer place, because not only do we reduce the movement, but we give people mental stimulation that creates hope and opportunity. And that creates, uh, that creates a safer place. That creates less behavioral issues, less, um, less uh, violence issues, things of that nature. Um, the administration of seats. I just bring this up because we've seen this in, in the sales that we're having now. If the adult ed group will lift from the jail the... Um, uh, um, the movement of people in and out of the technology program. So for instance, if I have 100 people in the jail, but I only have 50 seats, you know, that I'm sending it out um, the, the, on the tablet, somebody has to say which 50 tablets get it and which 50 don't. And that's done through technology. And it usually takes just a very little bit of time. It takes 10, 15 minutes a week to go in and say, these are the tablets that I'm deactivating the access for because those people were released. And these are the tablets that I'm putting into the program so they have access to it. Lift that for the jail. Take that on. You have teachers who can do that. Who, the, the companies will train you to do that. Um, and, and what that does is it allows you that management side, but it makes it easier on the jail staff. Again, who are not educators, who are not used to doing that. And helping them is a quick win strategy to, to get them excited about, you know, offering this to uh, their inmates. And then look for the other quick win strategies. What can you do for people on short stays that, um, you know, will, will mean something, a, a certificate, a credential, a pathway, something that gets them focused, something that shows well in the community. Um, Collaboration is key. You know, you need to be thinking about your CBOs, your workforce development groups, the other resources in the community, um, business and industry. Play the long game here. You're recruiting people into your program who are at a moment in their life when change is necessary, really necessary. And take advantage of that, but play the long game to get it. Finally, I would just say uh, back to that idea of interdependence and innovation. We have to figure out how we can all work together. Uh, as a technology company, we are excited to be in the middle of this, to be the delivery mechanism. And um, I'm super excited that Secure has hired me just to do this, right? <laughs> like, um, uh, you know, it's, it's a great uh, statement of the company's commitment to the idea that the tablet can really change lives. Um, I'm, I'm, this is, you know, these conversations are my job. So if you, whether your jail uses Securus or not, if you would like me to come and talk in your community or come meet with you or just brainstorm with you ways that uh, we can, we can design things. Uh, my email is there, dan.griffith at securistechnologies.com. Uh, I am glad to meet with you and talk with you. And uh, if you work with your jail and want somebody who can go in and, and talk with them about tablets and what's possible, uh, let me know. If they're a Securus customer at this point, let me know. We'd love to 
um, talk to them about ways that we can make this happen. Um, but please let me know uh, any way that I can support you in, uh, in, in getting this to happen. Cause I think it's really critical. It's such a powerful time and we're really at the tip of the sphere on this. Things are changing so wonderfully right now. And we have the act, we have the ability. I mean, this is really a revolutionary change in education. And it's not, I don't know that people have really realized how powerful this can be, uh, but this ability to deliver the way we can do now uh, changes everything. And so it's really exciting to be a part of that. I want to thank you all for the amazing work that you do, uh, you know, working with individuals in adult education. It's an honor to be able to stand at your side and do that. Uh, again, I will get back through the chat, answer any resol unresolved questions. I'll summarize some of these ideas uh, and get an email out to everybody on that. Thank you all so much. Uh, we look forward to working with you in the future. And uh, have a great rest of your uh, day and hopefully a wonderful upcoming summer. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Brian. Um, thank you, Securus Technologies. Uh, if you could fill out the poll before you leave. Um, also, you'll, you'll receive your certificate 24 hours after the live webinar ends. So by tomorrow afternoon, you'll receive your certificate as well as you can um, you receive a recording link as well. Um, and it will also be posted on our website as well. So thank you all for joining us. And thank you again, Dan and Securus Technologies. Thank you, Bethel.